Hi, I'm Donna Fields and welcome to Close Scaffolding 7. This is a series of webinars designed to give support to teachers using scaffolding in their lessons. Today we're going to go over how scaffolding technique number 16 works. You can find it and 100 more activities in my book, 101 Scaffolding Techniques for Language Teaching and Learning, that's also been translated into Spanish. Scaffolding, we can say, is a way to support our students so that they can move into new learning with more confidence. The objective for this session is to show how important brain writing is. I'll show you examples using scaffolding technique number 16 in a primary and secondary lesson, and then you can adapt it to any lessons you give. Brainstorming and mind mapping are two common scaffolding techniques. The teacher stands in front of the room, asks the students what they know about a subject, and waits for the students to shout out the answers. Think about it though, who always answers those questions? The same students as always. And who doesn't answer those questions? The same students as always. The introverts who are too embarrassed to speak in front of the others, either because they don't know the answers or they're afraid of making linguistic mistakes. And of course, the ones who are a little too cool to participate. We want all the students to participate. Brain writing solves this dysfunctional dynamic. You can read more about the benefits of brain writing in the transcript of this video at the YouTube page. Essentially, instead of calling out answers, each student has time to write stream of consciousness thoughts on the subject at hand. Let's see how this works in school. We'll start with a secondary math class. You're about to begin a chapter on trigonometry. You want to help the students activate past knowledge of fundamental concepts that'll help them move into trigonometry more logically and with more confidence. In groups of four, each student has a piece of paper. Now, you're seeing colored pieces of paper here because I love color, but they can use any type of recycled paper they have. And then each student writes at the top of their piece of paper, this is what I know about, and then a different student in each group finishes the sentence with subjects you write on the board. In this case, it might be what you see here. As you can see, even though there are probably four people in each group, I usually have six subjects ready just in case there are extra people in one of the groups. Once they have their statements written on the piece of paper in front of them, you give a signal. They'll have 45 seconds to write everything they know about the subject in front of them. When the 45 seconds is up, you give another signal and the students pass the piece of paper they've been working on to the group member on the left. They have 45 seconds to write everything they know about the new subject in front of them. They can also quickly read what the last person wrote if they want to. You repeat this dynamic until all the students have had a turn writing on each of the subjects. The students synthesize what they've written and share their summaries with the rest of the class. You can also have them vote on the clearest summary, the longest, the shortest, the strangest. Have fun with this part. Giving the summaries is yet another opportunity for the students to remember past studies and get oriented so that when they begin the new chapter, their minds will already be working and ready to build on refreshed past knowledge. Let's try the same technique with the primary art class. You're beginning a chapter on design and you want your students to activate knowledge from past art classes. In groups, students write on a piece of paper, this is what I know about, and then each student in each group finishes with a different ending from a list you've written on the board, such as these. You give them 45 seconds to write everything they remember about the subject in front of them. When the time is up, you give another signal and they pass their pieces of paper to the person on their left, and you continue this way until each member of the group has written on each subject. They synthesize what they wrote and they share it with the class. And that's it. But you've helped your students access past knowledge of many different facets of the subject you're moving into in a very short period of time. You've also created a safe environment that has helped to reduce anxiety in your students. They've been working collaboratively within a structure where no one can either be dominant or inactive, theoretically. So all you super teachers out there, this has been another scaffolding idea that I hope you can use in your lessons, and I look forward to hearing any comments you might have. You can find me at LinkedIn, at Pinterest, Facebook, or Instagram. And I look forward to seeing you next time. In the meantime, have fun in your classes. Bye.